So ladies and gentlemen, I know you're going to hate us for saying this, but as you know, we don't exactly hate Zuma. I mean, he's an interesting character. But the MK party itself is not a real party. It's not a serious party in any stretch of the imagination. No, it really is. It's a sort of a, a vehicle for grievances of Jacob Zuma. Well, Jacob Zuma is very good at being the victim, right? And I mean, that's fine. We think he's strategic. He was a relatively better president than Cyril, but he's not our hero by any means. And the MK party is really a grievance vehicle against Cyril Ramaphosa. But has done extremely well for these elections. What are the long-term prospects? I don't think they're very good. No, so if you actually look at the MK party and you look at the manifesto, the manifesto looks remarkably similar to an EFF manifesto. That may be because you would be inclined to think, well, possibly it's very keen on EFF ideas. Well, in this clip that we're about to show you, you will see exactly what a spokesperson, also known as Zuma's daughter, thinks about their economic policy. What kind of governments do you think MK party can bring? Uh, the same kind of government that we had under President Zuma. Those uh, nine amazing years, it's very similar. I want you to elaborate. Take me through it. What kind of... A better life for our black people, uh, improved uh, education system, um, and much more. So what agenda would you be driving just as far as you know, getting the economy back in track? Um, I think doing what uh, President Zuma did under his economy, which was great, uh, we'll just go back to that because the economy under Sir Ramaphosa was dismal. When you say go back to that, so you say perhaps you know this is one of one or two big things that you think you know are kind of low hanging fruits, mm -hmm. right? What would those be? Uh, well, if I'm trying to think now, quick, fast, um, we'll probably look at uh, things like probably like repo rates to assist in bringing down uh, you know food prices or whatever. So things like that, the low hanging fruits to assist to alleviate. There's not a Mickey Mouse party in terms of support. But I think, unlike Radham Dunsey, it's really easy to win votes if people know you very well. It's very difficult to sustain that period of action and that period of governance. And once again, long term, if Zuma goes, MK is done. Yes, you see, that becomes the fundamental problem. So in that clip, you will notice that the economic policy, the MK, was, uh, yeah, do what Zuma did before because he was great. The party is basically a Zuma party. People voted for the party because Zuma's face was on the ballot. That's why it was so important, and the ANC had all the infighting around whether or not his face, his face could appear on it. People voted for Zuma. But outside of Zuma, what does the MK party actually have? Now, they've got to fill 58 MP positions, and they don't have 58 MPs. Now, part of the reason for that is because um can't be an MP if you've got a criminal record with an actual sentence over 12 months and no option of fine, right? I mean, that's the reason that ZumaCon supposedly serve. That's most of the MK party list, mate. So, like, you know, it's not that they don't know the people, but they don't kind of not matching the criteria. So the other problem that they have is that Jacob Zuma, he can't serve. So you're going to get unknown individuals to go sit in parliaments. No one knows who they are, which means they're not really going to have as much of an impact. They don't really have the MPs anyway. So what do they do? Well, they actually have an answer for this, and that is they're not going to parliaments unless they have two-thirds of the majority. They can get rid of the constitution. Jacob Zuma can come back as king of the country and Wakanda forever. The problem is that's not going to happen, is it, Ramon? No, it's not going to happen. And uh, for those who don't know, the criminal record scenario is real. A lot of them are part of the construction mafia, like the MK is sort of funded by the construction mafia, by the so-called RET faction of the ANC. This is basically just their breakaway party. And a lot of them are just common gangsters and thugs and criminals and all the rest of it. What MK is doing as well is just recycling people. So you've got people that were the head coordinator of XYZ and who are now demoted to something else because of their usefulness. Uh, no longer exist anymore. So I give MK three years. I think it might be even shorter. Imagine you having to decide who goes to parliament. And assuming you can decide what is going to prevent those people from just killing each other for positions as they tend to do in case it ends, because that's just a you know complete whack uh, province. But on a macro level, if we are correct that there is a sort of ANC, DA, IFP national deal happening as we speak, 
that deal will have to leave out KZN. I think Zuma will have to have some sort of political power in KZN, along with the IFP, maybe have a good deal going between those two. And I think in time to come, the two can actually merge. And the IFP can actually become the dominant party in KZN once MK collapses on itself. Yes, that's very possible. Now, that whole comments about them being whack jobs in Durban. So for those of you who don't know, Durban's notoriously uh, well known for um, shooting its councillors that they don't like once their usefulness disappears. And to prove that to you, here's a clip of the founder of MK yesterday in court. And when he left, yeah, the MK party wasn't exactly very polite to him. What you can see... So that the MK party don't exactly self-respect. This is a party that will self-cannibalize. So once your usefulness is done, you're gone. Now, long term, that means that the party will cannibalize itself. In the short term, to exclude them from power would probably bring around another July 2021. And we've already seen threats from Zuma of that very occurrence. So in the short term, it would be folly to not include them. In the long term, the ANC and anyone else who's allied to the ANC, such as the DA and the IFP, only have to survive a certain period of time because Zuma, at 82 years old, is already aged. He will not live forever. He really won't live forever. So those who are worried about MK, as we said in that video a while ago, we said Jacob Zuma basically saved South Africa because he's forced the ANC into survival mode. And survival mode means... MK is the biggest threat to ANC hegemony. Therefore, the ANC will not choose MK and they won't choose the EFF either. For the same reason, the ANC will choose the DA solely for its own survival. MK is powerful now. We'll see how it goes in time to come. Also, the threats of violence, I think, ring a bit hollow. People are much more prepared now than they were in July 2021, including the government. The government is aware of all of this. There's lots of security being set up around KZN to quell any violence that might happen. And I mean, at the end of the day, like kudos to Jacob Zuma for being the master strategist, as always. The one issue he's always had is that he has never surrounded himself with excellent people. A bit like other political parties, he's surrounded himself with retards. And it shows. Yes, unfortunately, the retardation of the MK party is inevitable, as you can see from the clips we've shown you. The economic policies don't exist. Policies as a whole don't really exist. And the party exactly doesn't exactly respect itself. So long term, it's a party with very little survival prospects. But in the short term, it's a party that can cause a massive amount of disruption. And all we can say is at this point in time, we don't know what will happen with the coalition agreements. But I think all the coalition partners understand making your bed with Zuma is a very short-term prospect. It's a very short-term gain for a very long-term pain.